Hi, I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts, and this is The Art of Woodworking. In this session, what I'd like to do is to show you how to do some chip carving. And if you recall from the, one of the first episodes, you know, that's a motif like on this little box where you find, you know, the geometric forms uh, from, and we make stab cuts and have, make little chips and, uh, you know, you end up with a decoration like this. So let's get started. The next thing I'd like to do is to show you a little bit about uh, chip carving. So on the opposite side of this board, if you'll take a look at this, we got some decoration that's going on. It's very similar to that little box that I showed you a little bit earlier. Now this is what they call a sawtooth, which is the most, uh, one of the simpler ones to do. And we'll start off uh, doing the sawtooth. Now the sawtooth requires a different tool. It requires this, a uh, straight chisel that's wider than the actual cut that you need to make. And uh, we need to go ahead and do a layout first. So, okay, I held this to the, uh, the board with a couple of sheetrock screws. So um, you could use, uh, I use double stick tape once in a while. And, um, you know, it, you certainly don't want to, uh, you know, screw it on if, if you're actually gonna use this surface or it's gonna be visible. So, but since this is just an exercise, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw this down. and. Basswood is so soft it doesn't take much with a, just a regular screwdriver to set this in. If it was a harder wood, you'd probably need to drill some holes, pilot holes, so that you don't break the screw off. All right, so we got a clean surface now. And we're gonna come in uh, three eighths of an inch or so, or three quarters of an inch. And we'll put a parallel line to the edge. And then we'll come in an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter, which makes this a half inch. Uh, how about it? What is that? Then? Yeah, it's about a half inch. Okay, and we'll run another line. And this is a fairly simple layout. Basically, if we take a uh, square. This is a 45 degree angle and if we work off of off of the end here and wherever these intersect with the uh, parallel lines we just need to draw lines all the way along. Now I'm going to lay these out So these are all great exercises to learn how to do. And this is all about controlling the chisel and getting the proper depth of cut. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna to try to do two or three of these along here. So they're very similar layouts. So what I, I, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all just do this sawtooth cut on two or three of these. And the way that we handle that is we take a, a straight chisel and if we hold this on the line like so, now one of the things I have to be conscious of is that this bevel that I have here has to be perpendicular 
or straight up and down. If I put it str the tool straight up and down, it's actually making a V cut like this into the surface of the board, and I don't really want that to happen. I want that, that wall to be straight up and down. So if I come back this way, and the other thing that I have to do is I have to, I have to have it on the line and I have to tilt the chisel. Now, if I look at the space between the edge of the chisel and the surface of the board, that's how deep I'll make my cut because I want the cut to go from the deepest point to the shallowest point where there's making no cut at the, uh, where the, the two lines intersect. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that cut first. And usually if you're doing this type of work, you want to do the same cut over and over again. So I'll come back in the opposite direction and make that cut. And you have to be fanatical about putting it on right on the line. And now we're gonna come back with three cuts. This one needs to be a little bit deeper. I'm gonna come back in this direction and I'm gonna make one cut, two cuts, three cuts, maybe four. The fourth one's right up to your line. Now what we're trying to do here is to try to get a nice consistent depth of cut and have that plane go all the way across. And again, we're gonna make one, two, maybe three cuts. Make sure the corners cleaned out well and you got a nice flat surface. So this is what we call chip carving. And as you can see, we're taking one chip, two chips, and then three chips. And make sure that the corner is cleaned out. So, you know, if you just continuously go across like that, you'll end up with the same pattern like you see here going all the way across. Now if we go ahead and uh, do um, alter these uh, slightly with vertical lines at every other point of intersection, we're going to make these Going to make these a little different now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have these vertical lines deep, and then the opposite deep, and then the opposite deep, and the opposite deep, and the opposite deep. Now we've got to come back. And we're going to make cuts in this direction, where it's the deepest along this line. We're going to make every other cut deep, like so. And then we're going to come back in the opposite direction and make every other cut deep. And then we have to do the same on the opposite side. Same over here. Okay, now we're going to go back this way. We're going to make cuts coming in in this direction. And we want to finish up right along that line. We'll do the next one. If the shaving doesn't come off, come back and cut it off. Okay, then we're gonna come back in the opposite direction. And along there, those should meet up. And we wanna make sure that those are, that falls away can also come in from this direction as well. You're cutting across the grain. It's 
So it's a matter of whether or not it gives you a smooth enough surface. And the trick is to make the center cut come down and meet up perfectly. So we'll do the opposite side now. Couple of cuts. Now, depending on how, how deep you make these cuts, will depend on the shadowing. If you get too deep, sometimes it's a little difficult to get the tool inside there because if you look at the tool, when we angle it ever so slightly, this is no longer perpendicular. So the cut coming in is slightly angled. So you have to be able to, you know, contend with that. Make sure that the the shavings are falling away. And then we come back in from the opposite direction. And one of the, the, uh, the tricks is controlling the cut as well. So when I'm grabbing hold of the tool this way, I'm actually pushing with my right hand and I'm restricting the cut with my left hand. So I'm not just careening through, which would spoil my work. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go on to this one over here. Now this one is done by just adding, uh, let me think here. I think if we bring a line off of here, with each one of these, the center point. And then we come back off of that with lines, 45 degree lines as well. So you notice that you can create a numerous patterns with just this 45 degree cut. Okay, now we have, we have to do two levels here. We have to do a level at uh, this corner here and then a double triangle out, out towards the end. So we'll go ahead and do the inside first with our stab cuts. You gotta be crazy about making sure that your tool is lined up with the line this way and you got the same angle each time. So you notice how I grab this, I sort of restrict myself from going too deep. And we also have to come back and make cuts on this opposite side as well. Now I'm going to take these two outside triangles off first, this way. You notice, oh, let me miss that cut. Easy to do. And then come back. Okay, now we need to go ahead and take out this back corner here, which is a little bit more difficult. We have to make sure that we get an angle going all the way across. And it's all about creating the shadows for those lines now. So that's three different, you know, pieces of chip carving. And, you know, they all look quite
quite different depending on how you look at them. Now there's this one last one here which is actually squares that go all the way across. We'll try that one. Um, well it's very similar. Basically you just have to make X's. So I'll just show you the layout and basically the, uh, the procedure is the same because I'd like to get along and show you a little bit more about some curved work as well. Okay, so if I start off here like so, I basically have to do this and then start off with just these to begin with. I'll just do a few of these and So each one of these now have to have lines coming across this way. And we're going to go in the opposite direction now, which is like so. These are going to be angled cuts. So we're making these X's through here and come back in the opposite direction. So okay, so these are what we're trying to save. Uh, a smaller tool might be a little more of use here. Try this one. So we're going to make these cuts like so. back this way. And back in this direction. And then we need to chip out these triangles here. And you can certainly see how that's starting to form now. So that's a, that's a pretty good start for some chip carving. Is uh, I think if you look online, you'll find a lot more uh, about doing some curves and so forth. But um, you can certainly see you can develop some simple patterns with just a couple of simple tools. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing I'd like to do is just show you, um, you know, how, uh, how we carve on curved surfaces like this. So this is what we call carving the donut. And the donut, uh, when you learn how to do this, it really is uh, eye-opening as far as grain direction is involved. So when we think about this now, if we see that the grain is uh, running from, uh, from you know, myself to the other side, I'm going to put a center line in this way and a center line going across this way. So basically you've got four quadrants. And I'm going to carve the outside of this now. I'm going to round it off uh, using a... a uh, you know, a gouge just to soften the surface. But the thing is that you're going to find is that if I carve, uh, you know, this quadrant here, if I hold, if the the, uh, the box of straws is actually running through uh, the piece in this direction. So if I have the box of straws here, uh, if, you know, if I carve in this direction, I'm going to be laying those straws down. So this outside is going to be 
I need to carve in that direction. On this quadrant over here, this gets flipped over like so. So I'm going to be carving in this direction. So this is the direction of cut there. And then what happens here is if I flip it over in this direction, you know, the direction of cut is in this direction. So I'm going to be carving in that direction. And then if this gets flipped in this direction, if I carve back in this direction here, I'm going to be going with the grain on in each one of those quadrants. And I'll just grab a, uh, oh, let's see, let's try a number 520 here or something like that. So I can confidently, uh, you know, take a cut. You know, let's, uh, let's say if we, we want to carve this round all the way to about there and down to about here. What I'm going to do is I can start here and make these cuts coming around like this. You notice that those are cutting nice and smoothly right to about the center line there. And I can go a little further back here because we got straight grained. And if I go here, you notice it's cutting beautifully right around. So here I'm taking advantage of the grain. Now if I go too far back in this direction, what you're going to see happen is it's going to chip out like that. And you know that's what we're trying to avoid here. So you have to find that sweet spot where you can you know, come back in the opposite direction in order to be going with the grain at all times. And what you see here is it's split right along there. So it's really right about at that center line where the grain changes. So if I come back in this direction, I'll be cutting with the grain. And then in the opposite direction, cutting with the grain. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens if I want to carve the inside of this, um, this donut, what happens is the grain direction changes completely in the opposite direction. So, in other words, this quadrant here now, if I look at the fibers coming out like so, I need to be carving in this direction. So, the, grain, the, the carving direction is here, which is completely opposite of what we had on the outside, which was going in the opposite direction. And this one flips over, and we're carving in this direction. And then simultaneously, like so. So instead of starting at the corners here and coming around to the very ends, we're going to be starting you know, in the, uh, at the ends and coming around to the center. So this is going to flip around like so. And we're going to carve in this direction. So the arrows, you know, tell the story here. Now, in order to reach inside of here, I'm going to introduce that second tool, which is the, uh, the back bend, which will allow me to make my cuts easily because the handle is going to be up out of the way. Whereas if I try to use something like this, what happens is that the, uh, the, the uh, blade will hit the, uh, the material and start to bounce on me and it'll leave a a uh, surface that's, uh, that's irregular. So when I go to start my cut here, what I'm going to do is come around in this direction and around in this direction. And again, it's trying to make those cuts match up. And around in this direction and around in this direction. So if I was to carve this entire donut, on both sides, top side and underside, I would have to carve in 16 different directions. Four going around the outside in this direction, four around the inside of here, four more on the opposite side on the outside, 
and four more on the inside. So 16 different directions in order to carve, you know, this one circle. So it, this is a really important lesson. And if you're going to do any carving in the round, this is one of the lessons that you really have to think about. Because when we start to car carve on curves, you know, this is where, um, you know, the rubber meets the road. Let's put it that way. So um, for now, uh, I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts, and this is the art of woodworking.